Hello everybody, my name is Dean. Welcome to Books and Quirks. Today is Friday, so it's time for a Friday Reads. So let me just get right into it. I was able to finish a couple things. I'm working on a couple things, so let me just get started. So the first book that I finished was The Winter Sea by Susanna Kearsley. This was such a good book. Oh my gosh, I gave it five stars. I absolutely love this. This is becoming one of my favorite authors. You know, she throws in a little bit of time travel, a little bit of romance, a little bit of, you know, fantasy. I think there's a helicopter or something outside. I'm sorry if you hear that. But um, this was such a good book. So this follows a writer. Her name is Carrie. And she is, she writes historical fiction and she goes to, she rents a little cottage off the Scotland coast um, near a very historic castle and she is just kind of writing her novel there. She goes there for inspiration. She is writing about the Jacobi um, invasion. This was this took place in 1708, this book, um, or actually two timelines, the present and also 1708. And in 1708, that was the time where King James uh, the Catholic King of England and Scotland was deposed and exiled. Um, he became king as a baby and they are trying to get him back on the throne because, you know, the Protestant um, king and queen are now the head of England and Scotland. And yeah, they're just, you know, there's a lot of people behind this, you know, um, kind of revolution a little bit to try to get King James back on the throne and to get him back on Scottish soil. So Carrie is writing this novel around that kind of uh, time period around, you know, with characters and everything. And she soon finds out that what she's writing is actually fact. And she is, she has sort of the genetic memories of one of her ancestors and it's uh, I don't even know how to explain it if you read the back of this book it probably explains it a lot more eloquently than I can um, I don't want to read the whole thing but it's such a good book if you like historical fiction if you like romance I think you will definitely like this book such a good book so glad I read it and the Winter Sea actually ticks off one of the boxes. I have to give you an update on my bingo card for Reading Through the Ages, which is the year-long historical fiction readathon that I'm doing. And um, But that will tick off one of those boxes. I just can't remember which box it is. <laughs> so the other um, two books, or actually three books, because I just finished the third one last night that I finished, was part of a romance trilogy. And that is... I actually can't find the name of the trilogy, but <laughs> the first book is Overture. The second book is Concerto. I'm just looking at my phone. And the third book is Sonata. So these three books are by Sky Warren. This is a continuous trilogy over with the same characters over the course of three books. And it follows a young woman who is sort of grew up as a child prodigy of the violin. And, or she's a musical prodigy, I should say, but Violet is her like choice of uh, instrument that she prefers, but she could play anything. And um, as she grows older, she sort of um, is watched over by her ward um, who uh, took her in. And when she gets older, she starts to form an attraction to him. Anyway, it's it was a good, it was a sweet romance, I thought. Um, I really enjoyed the musical aspect of it, and I enjoyed Sky Warren before. I can't remember which book I read by her, but I know that I've read something by her before. She's written a ton, a ton of romance books, and I really enjoyed these three. I mean, they weren't the best ever, but they were still good for, for you know, just an enjoyable romance, and it was sort of that, you know, forbidden love trope that um, is going around now. And yeah, so it was really good. I thought um, I gave it, I gave two of the books four stars. I just didn't like the middle one too much. I think I wound up giving it three. I have to look on Goodreads, but it was more like that for me. Um, it was just good for, for what I was looking for, which is an easy, fun, fluffy read. 
Okay, so those are the three books that I finished, really had an enjoyable reading week. But now I'm sort of in a predicament because I'm not sure what I'm in the mood for for this coming week. I think I'm going to give a couple of books a try uh, tonight and into the weekend to see if they if I'm in the mood for them, because I know that I really want to get into them eventually before the end of the year, because they also fill requirements for the Reading Through the Ages readathon. So let me tell you what I'm going to be hopefully reading this weekend. So the first book that I have is The Royal Physician's Visit by Perilov and Quist. This is actually a Swedish a Swedish novel. It was an international bestseller and it is translated by Tina Nunali from Swedish. And this is about uh, Denmark in the 1760s. Um, so it says, um, yeah, it follows a German doctor named Struensti and his mistress and all of the reforms which he, uh, brought forward to Denmark in the 1760s. I think the, the first line of this book is really telling, and I'll just read it to you really quick. It says, on April 5th, 1768, Johann Friedrich Struensi was appointed royal physician to King Christian VII of Denmark, and four years later, he was executed. So, I don't know, kind of reminds me of like a Tudor novel, even though this is so not Tudor. <laughs> since it's in the 1700s, but um, yeah, I've heard good things about this book and I hope to get into it this weekend. Um, that first line intrigues me, so I feel like I will get into it this weekend. But like I said, I'm in a weird position and not really sure what I'm in the mood for. <laughs> but yeah, so this one is um, definitely a contender. Another one that I've been itching to read, and I think I might want to get into it this weekend, is The Captive Queen by Alison Weir. Um, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know what a fan I am of Alison Weir. Her historical fiction is, you know, just incomparable to other historical writers. She is a historian herself, and she's written tons of novels, mainly about the Tudors, but this actually is about Eleanor of Aquitaine, who was the, the wife of King Louis VII of France, but then became the wife of the English King Henry years later. This is not Henry VIII. This is different than me. So yeah, um, I don't know anything about Eleanor of Aquitaine, so this will be a brand new uh, venture for me in terms of this monarch. But, and this is historical fiction, it's not nonfiction, but still, um, I'm eager to learn because the thing with Alison Weir is, even in her historical fiction, she puts a lot of fact in her fiction and she explains always in her author notes where she took liberties. So you can be assured that some of what you read in her historical fiction books are in fact, you know, true. So, um, yeah, I'm really eager to get into this hopefully this weekend. And yeah, this is kind of a, a little bit of a thicker book, but still can't wait to get into this. The only other thing I was thinking of reading this weekend, and it would be a reread for me is, and I've been itching to reread some of my favorites, especially like urban fantasy, because I've been on that kind of kick lately, especially with the Alex Vera series and everything else. I was thinking of maybe rereading the Dark Fever series by Karen Marie Moaning. This is a fantasy paranormal series. My cat is playing with her ball, if you hear that in the background, but this is a fantasy paranormal series. So in the first book, it follows um, Michaela, I think her name is. Yes, Michaela Lane. So Michaela Lane, um, her sister in the beginning of the first book is in Ireland and she is murdered. And at the beginning of the book, Michaela is going over to Ireland, not only to clean up her sister's things, but also to find out what happened to her sister and, you know, why she was murdered and all of that stuff. Um, and little does she know that there are forces that she is not yet aware of and paranormal creatures and everything that she is not yet aware of. And she soon is in danger. 
So, I mean, there are just, there's so many things going on in these books and I absolutely loved them. Now, there are a lot of books in the series. When I read the series, I read the first five, which follows mostly Michaela's story. I didn't go on past that because then it followed mainly different characters. So I'm really thinking of rereading the series. I really enjoyed it when I read it, and it's been like four years since I read it. So I think I maybe want to reread that. Um, either that or the Pride series, which is a paranormal werewolf series. I really enjoyed that too, and that is also urban fantasy. And yeah, so we'll see. I just kind of want to reread one of my favorites. Usually when I get into these moods of, I'm not sure what I'm in the mood for, um, rereading a favorite of mine, um, and there are so many I could choose from, you know, usually does the trick. So that is all I have for you. That is my quick Friday reads. I'll let you know next week what I decided to delve into and what I finished and whatnot. I hope you all have a good weekend. It was quite rainy yesterday and a little bit cloudy today, but it's supposed to be really gorgeous over the weekend, so I hope that it's the same for you, and I will see you all very, very soon.